Hello everyone. This is a book of Yod, from zero to hero video basically, by the end of the first day, the team is at level 100, and the main story has progressed to the third chapter, the gate of the old days, the first level has been cleared, and the account has spent zero currency. Subsequent strategies will be released soon, interested buddies, please follow me. The strategy officially begins, there's some game plot at the beginning, after clearing, you'll receive some red equipment, but the equipment level is too low, we can choose freely. After being able to freely switch combinations, we enter the official wiki, open this post, and redeem all the codes inside. Some diamonds can be used for summoning, for our initial characters. If setting a wish, it's still SS Traveler of Starry Flowers. Then, as Solus Commander and Northland Princess, and Alice, I recommend Starry Flowers, for SS cards, use one to upgrade two, the Ocost one is a bit tricky, if you have SB cards, it's fine, upgrade SB cards freely, you can keep this wish setting until Starry Flowers is maxed, no need to change it. Angels and Frozen Heart are suitable for both advancing the main storyline and pushing towers, the ones given in the newbie event are already sufficient. If you aim for the highest level on the first day, I suggest obtaining two angels initially. Through my testing, without angels on the first day, reaching level 100 is unlikely, even with Alice. One early game loop is to progress through the main storyline until it becomes challenging, then climb the summoning day tower. When the tower becomes too tough, go back to advancing the main storyline. Repeat this cycle. One thing to note is that we'll receive an SS card when we join a guild for the first time, so, apply to guilds that are close to each other once is enough. If you can't find a guild to join, you can create your own guild on the first day. After obtaining the card, disband the guild immediately to save time. After a day, you can then apply to other guilds again because there is currently no guild battle. As long as you're active, it's sufficient. For players who don't spend much or any money, a crucial tip is to stop summon after the first SS card from our wishlist appears. Because in this game, a black guard's combat power is closely tied to their quality. No matter how many SS cards you have, it won't matter much. The key is to enhance the quality of the same SS card. Therefore, when approaching the guaranteed draw, it's advisable to stop. Wait until the next day after the wishlist refreshes before drawing again. Of course, if you manage to get the desired card within the first few hundred summon, that's great you've hit the jackpot. Pay attention to the labyrinth. The experience rewards are tied to your level. Try to tackle it when you find it challenging to progress in the main story or tower. Like me, if you attempt it too early, you'll miss out on a lot of experience. The difficulty of the labyrinth is quite low, and beginners may initially find it challenging. However, with time and practice, you'll get used to it. Choose skills that enhance ranged damage, such as bounce, penetration, and lightning chains, they work exceptionally well. If you don't have good skills at the beginning, you can restart without any restrictions. The boss on the 10th floor is the trickiest. However, staying close to the edge helps avoid getting hit by its whirlwind attack. After completing the corridor for the first time, achievements provide additional currency, making it seem abundant. However, it's essential to remember that exchanging for SS cards might seem too casual, considering you can get one each time you clear the corridor. In the current version, the release of SS cards has increased compared to before. However, due to the abundance of SS cards, rotating through them takes time. Therefore, when choosing to exchange independently, prioritize obtaining Flowers Ling. During the progression of the main storyline, we will unlock some hunt events. The rewards from these hunts are fixed. Therefore, after triggering a hunt, prioritize completing the hunt tasks. The early diamonds and magic crystals provided as rewards are very helpful for our upgrades. The difficulty of hunts is extremely low, and you can easily pass them regardless of how you approach the battles. In the early stages, resources like fatigue packs or action points are recommended to be preserved whenever possible. Regarding the various currencies in the black market, aside from guild coins, which are specifically for guild skills, others can be used to exchange for fragments of the main hero. 
The Lura box with a duration of several hours can be saved and used after reaching level 400 and unlocking forging. During this time, there might be a shortage of Lura, and using it then would be more beneficial. As for the magic crystals given over a few hours, they can be consumed when facing challenges like being stuck in the main storyline or climbing the tower. The same applies to the Resurrection Cross it's useful when attempting difficult levels in the main storyline, especially before reaching level 250. Outside of these situations, these items don't serve much purpose. On the first day, our levels are low, and the experience needed for leveling up is not easily achieved through away from keyboard grinding. So, if we find ourselves unable to progress, waiting for a few hours before attempting again might be a good strategy. Here is a point that some players might overlook the skills of the main character. In the early stages, these skills are extremely useful, particularly the skills Leap, Ground Trample, and Frozen Cyclone, when combined with Angel and Hunter, can be effective against many bosses. Repeated attempts using these skills may lead to success. These skills have been redesigned in updates. However, it's still not recommended to watch the main character's equipment as it has a low cost effectiveness, at least in the current version. For the Yggdrasil slots, open them whenever necessary, no need to be too conservative. Constantly switching them around can be wasteful. The Soul Stone should only be opened when needed. There's no rush to unlock all slots at once. Around level 70-80, the system will gift red grade equipment. You can choose the punishment three piece set. Then, with the 90 weapon shards given, exchange them directly for the hunt set. No need to be conservative with this. There will be plenty of these items later. There's no need to worry about the attributes of these equipment. As long as they are legendary or above with equipment skills, they're good to go. With these equipment pieces, around level 100, you can try challenging the first stage of the Primeval Gates. This dungeon drops legendary histories, which are quite useful in the early stages. Once you've consumed your energy through the Primeval Gates, that's about it. Now, you can see that dealing with the regular enemies in Chapter 3 is starting to become challenging. Since Angel's ultimate is single target before level 250 with a lower success rate, you may need to try multiple times if you're not afraid of the hassle. After reaching level 250, this won't be an issue, and theoretically, you should be able to defeat any bosses you encounter. So, that's all for this guide. Have a nice journey! Cause every time we touch, I get this I swear I could fly Can't you feel